And then of course, um, in Peter Pan, uh, I was uh, uh, cast in a brand new role of Minnie Smee. If you're unfamiliar with the role Minnie Smee in Peter Pan, uh, that's because there is no role of Minnie Smee in Peter Pan. They just have to give parts to all of the kids in the Wolf Theater Academy. I was a deeply insecure uh, teenager, so I really wanted to um, make sure that um, people knew it was me. Uh, and they did. And now I'm back. <laughs> Happy to be here. I'm so happy to be back in Colorado. Uh, I am from Colorado. Um, I thank you. I I, I don't ski though. Um, in fact, uh, no one in my family skis, which is a a bit of a cardinal sin in Colorado, as you know. You know, it's like they say a a Colorado family that's happy not skiing is like a Catholic family that's happy. some Catholics uh, going on over here. Um, I, I can say that, I, I have some Catholic friends. Um, uh, but I'm so happy to be here, uh, back here in Colorado. I'm also so happy to be here at the Denver JCC, where I grew up. I did, uh, yeah, I did, um, I did plays and musicals on the stage all the time. Uh, I, I am Jewish, I was raised Jewish. Um, I was not raised super Jewish though. Um, I did go to synagogue. Jew church for the Catholics, um, but it was a, a reconstructionist Jewish synagogue. Now, all right, for those of you who might not know what that means, they know. Uh, um, like, 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 think about it like this, like in terms of um, beer, right? Like if, if Orthodox Judaism is like the dark beer of Judaism, yeah, you know, then Reform Judaism is like the light beer of Judaism, then Reconstructionist Judaism is a uh, Capri Sun. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of fruity and clear, no alcohol content. <laughs> like, 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 from my recollection as a kid, uh, Reconstruction Judaism was like 90% tambourines. Just uh, a lot of middle aged white people in shawls going, like, yeah. Like, like, our rabbi looked and sounded like Ellen DeGeneres. Does that kind of paint the picture? Um, no, no, she didn't, she didn't actually look like Ellen. It's just, I've, I've, uh, I've tried that joke with other famous lesbians and it, like, hasn't quite landed as much. Um, I think because she's their queen, you know? Um, I, I can say that. I look like Rachel Maddow. Um, so, so. Really taking it in, yeah. <laughs> and dress like Rachel Maddow. Um, uh, but it's so good to be back in Colorado. I, I've lived in uh, Los Angeles for about the last five years. That's about the right reaction, yeah. Um, uh, I moved to LA about five years ago. Uh, the second month that I moved there, I got carjacked at Knife Point. Yeah, oh wow, welcome, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, to be fair, it was um, alleged Knife Point, right? Like the guy pulled me out of my car, told me he had a knife, and I wasn't like, prove it. Um, <laughs> trusted him, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, uh, and just for a little bit of necessary background about the car in question, um, it didn't have a back bumper on it, per se, okay? So uh, my mom, Jewish mom, uh, gave me a call after this happened and she was like, hey Sam, uh, this is really terrible that this happened to you, but uh, I'd been telling you, you needed to replace that back bumper. Um, and I just think your car would have been less of a target <laughs> if it had uh, had that back bumper on it. <laughs> so I think my mom slut shamed my car. Because <laughs> I think what happened there, she's like, well, you know, I'm not saying your car was asking for it, but uh, I'm not, not saying that, all right? Waving its car bits out in the back for the world to see like a common harlot. 
My mom's gonna love that impression. Um, <laughs> um, I, will, I will tell you, um, they did find my car after I got carjacked. Um, the uh, gentleman who stole my car got in a chase with the police and completely wrecked and totaled my car and a minivan. And I went to the impound lot to retrieve my belongings. And I want you to play um, very close attention here, okay, to the contents of this car, all right? Everything that was in the glove compartment was thrown into the back seat. Everything that was in the center console was thrown into the back seat. In the cup holders were four unopened packs of cigarettes. And on the passenger side seat was one styrofoam IHOP plate atop which sat one half-eaten pancake. <laughs> so he stole my car to go get pancakes. That is punk rock, honestly. <laughs> like, I, I will never do anything that cool. Uh, th okay, the following is a rendition um, of how I believe this gentleman's night must have gone. Um, this is a fictional account, uh, but based on the aforementioned evidence, okay? <clears throat> All right. So he's wandering around thinking like, God damn it, I could really use some pancakes. <laughs> Sees me, thinks easy, bingo, steals my car. Is about to uh, drive and thinks, hmm, perhaps there are pancakes in the glove compartment. No, no, nah, perhaps there are pancakes in the center console. No, no, nah, I'm so stressed, I could really use some cigarettes. So he goes to the 7-Eleven, he goes and says, cigarettes, please. They say one pack, he says, ha ha, no, four packs of cigarettes, please. Gets back in the car, is about to crack him open, thinks, wait, you're on a mission. Pancakes first, cigarettes later. Surely nothing will intervene in the meantime. Keeps driving, finally sees the blue beacon on the horizon, the International House of Pancakes. Goes in, says, pancakes to go, please. They say, how many? He says, one. Gets back in the car, starts eating, driving, eating, driving, living his best life. Sees the sirens in the rear view mirror and thinks, fuck it, I'm going out my way. Careens into a minivan, and just as the police are telling him to get out of the car and put his hands up, he says, wait. And he takes his half-eaten pancake and gingerly places it <laughs> on the passenger side seat. And he says, whoever's car this is, I want them to know. And that, I think, would be an awesome IHOP commercial. Right? Yeah. <laughs> The International House of Pancakes. Fuck the police. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, um, that was LA. Uh, <laughs> and so needless to say, I'm super excited to be here. Um, I'm here with some family. I'm, I'm here visiting my dad. Um, my dad is a transgender woman. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh wait, uh, uh, if you don't cheer, you're a bigot. So. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah. No, no, no one wants to be a bigot at the JCC. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, my um, my dad, you know, lived uh, most of her life presenting as a man. Um, now is living her true self as a woman. Um, you might notice I do still call her dad. Um, uh, and she even prefers that. She said uh, uh, she doesn't think of dad as a gendered term, which I think is really cool. Um, but it, it can be it confusing, right? Because obviously dad traditionally is a male gendered term. She is my dad. But you know, in Spanish, cabbages are male. <laughs> and mushrooms are female, so gender, you know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Um, and you know, as a result of my dad uh, transitioning, I've I've been thinking a lot more about uh, trans issues and you know, like prominent trans people in the media. Um, I think we decided a uh, hot take here, everyone. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> Settle down. Um, and here's why. Like, like, first of all, there's no doubt that what Caitlyn did, like, a few years ago in terms of, like, coming out in such a visible way and bringing visibility to the trans community at that time was huge, right? There's no doubt about that. There's also no doubt, though, that she killed someone with her car, right? <laughs> so, you know, 
Strike. One. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we really Matthew broderick her on that one. Um, for those who don't know, they know. Um, <laughs> Matthew Broderick actually killed uh, two people with his car, uh, but we as a society collectively forgot and forgave him, I can only assume because of Inspector Gadget. Um, <laughs> We you know, like, I, as a as a comedian, I've I've had some um, some comedian friends like ask me about my dad, and specifically ask me about like Sam, like, what did your dad think of Dave Chappelle's recent Netflix specials? You know, like, there's a lot of a lot of buzz in the media about them. Like, were they transphobic? Were they funny? Were they not? Um, and I didn't know, so I asked her. I was like, Dad, what did you think of Dave Chappelle's Netflix specials? And she was like. Who's Dave Chappelle? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> because uh, more than being trans, my dad is old. Um, <laughs> so she was like, I didn't hear about that on NPR, so I don't wanna. I don't wanna like it. <laughs> and it, and listen, I think no matter where you stand on the Dave Chappelle thing, I, I think one, one thing that's abundantly clear is that like, Netflix as a corporation like like doesn't give a shit, right? They they released a special, um, but then at the same time during Pride Month they're like all like pro LGBT messaging like we love gays, um, but th but that's all it is, right? It's 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 marketing, it's messaging, it's it's popular, it makes them money, um, and it's a trend too, you know, like a lot of corporations, a lot of companies are doing sort of social justice marketing. Um, and I think the funniest one uh, was Gillette Razors. Um, uh, I, I don't know if you remember, uh, but a, last year around the time of like the Me Too movement and Time's Up, um, Gillette had a campaign called Be Better Men. And it was just like these beautifully filmed, inspiring commercials of like dads shaving with their sons. And it was like, be better men. You know, like stop sexually harassing your coworkers. Stop bullying people who are different than you are. And so naturally, like, a response from a large part of America and the internet was, um, no! <laughs> of like MAGA, like QAnon bros, like throwing their Gillette razor in the toilet. Like, like I'm gonna fuck up my plumbing to own the libs, you know? Like, and they're, they're, they're like, I would rather shave my face with a rusty butter knife than use one of these cuck blades, you know? <laughs> I think they should have gone all the way with it and just like fully rebranded as 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 cuck blades, you know. And then and then to really piss that demographic off, they should have made their spokesperson like Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, you know. And, that, and the whole the whole commercial is just like AOC marching down the halls of Capitol Hill, like rattling off all of her progressive policy proposals. And at the end, she turns direct to camera and she goes, "Cuck blades, I will fuck your mother and make you watch." And we cut to black. <laughs> No, and they play that during the Super Bowl, right? And all around the country, we hear one collective, which is just like four million 4chan bros all at once, like punching a hole through the drywall of their mother's basement. <laughs> Been thinking about going into advertising, so <laughs> thank you for letting me work on that. Um, I think that whole thing was was so fascinating because it was like, it, it was clearly the same demographic that got really up in arms when Nike had their Colin Kaepernick ads, right? They were like, oh, you're taking like a symbolic stand against uh, police brutality and our racist criminal justice system? I will burn my $300 Nikes and wear New Balance because I want to look like a divorced dad before my time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And they will all be divorced dads. Um, probably not for the same reason that my dad got divorced, but I, I don't know. I don't know where they are on their journeys, right? Um, <laughs> and it, it does all show like the, the like visceral power of, of advertising though, right? Um, and I, I think the, the most effective ad that I've ever seen was here in Colorado. Does anyone here remember a few years ago the Colorado Anti-Meth Project? Yeah. <laughs> that is someone traumatized by those ads. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, for, the, for those of who don't know, well, first of all, I, I, I feel like I should say, um, I've never done meth. <laughs> Too loud of a laugh on that. Um, I know my 
svelte figure might betray that notion. <laughs> Meth. Um, <laughs> mm, mm. Um, but here's why. It's because of the Colorado Anti-Meth Project, right? Colorado used to have a huge meth problem. Huge enough that there were these anti-meth billboards all over the state. Um, and my favorite one uh, was there was one right next to my high school, which was just like a picture of a gross, grungy sink splattered in blood. Yeah. And it said at the top, you never think you try to peel off your own skin. Hmm. Go on. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel, I feel seen by this ad, yeah. <laughs> never thought I'd do that. You, you never think you try to peel off your own skin. Meth will change that. First of all, very effective, right? Like, I will never do meth as a result of that. I hope none of you will ever do meth as a result of that. Maybe for some of you, it's too late. I don't know. Mm -hmm. right there. Um, sir, I'm saying you look like you could, like, plausibly be addicted to crystal methamphetamines. Um, I said it about myself, too, you know? It means we're skinny and popular, right? Okay, yeah, I'll take an air five on that. Um, I'm sorry, I don't mean to give it up for the cast of Riverdale. I don't, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, I digress. You never think you try to peel off your own skin, meth will change that, right? What, what I would love to see would be like a similar style of PSA but for like way less dangerous drugs, you know? Like, um, for example, like, you never think you try to peel a grape with your teeth and then use the peeled grape as sort of like a lip balm on your lips because your lips are super duper chapped. Weed will change that. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Not just me. Okay, yeah. Or like, or like, or like, you never think you'd get in a very public argument with a stranger about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in a Wendy's. <laughs> Two Four Locos will change that. <laughs> or, or like, one, one more, one more. Uh, you never think you'd try to sort and categorize an entire party-sized bag of flaming Hot Cheetos by size and shape. Adderall will change that. <laughs> hmm. That takes hours. Um, <laughs> I hear. <laughs> I, did, I did that joke once and I went, that takes, and this really drunk lady at the back went, talent! And I was like, <laughs> I was like, like, thank you, but no, that takes drugs um, and, and grit. Uh, <laughs> uh, believe it or not, from everything about me, um, when I was a kid, um, my teachers tried to convince my parents to put me on Adderall. Um, and uh, to help you picture what I was like as a kid, like, picture, picture Sid from Toy Story meets Chicken Little, you know? Like, like cute, but in a bird kind of way, you know? Uh, I, went, I went to a, a, a Taekwondo class when I was 10 years old, and completely true, the instructor told me that I looked like I was built for math, which... <laughs> Which, in retrospect, is, one, an appalling thing to tell a 10-year-old, um, and two, a, a hilarious roast. So, okay, um, like, tell me a picture before. I, I had glasses, um, but with that, that strap in the back. Uh, yeah, because I was uh, doing this a lot, uh, apparently. <laughs> yeah. and, and they were not, they were not just... Oh God! It was it, it was not just um uh, uh like the strap in the back. It was um I called it the action strap, right? Um, there were also flexible glasses too, like little the the wires in the glasses could bend because my parents didn't trust me. Um, and so one day in the first grade, I was just sitting there just bending my glasses as you're wont to do. Um, and this other girl in my class who had glasses, uh, her name was Rachel Wilson. Um, she came up to me and she's like, Oh my God, like how do you do that? And I was like, Oh, I don't know. You, you just do it. And she was like, Oh, okay. And she snapped her own glasses in half. <laughs> 
And I went to the principal's office for that. But she is addicted to meth now. So, um, <laughs> what am I gonna do? <laughs> That's um, probably not true. Um, and I did use her full name, so libel. Um, but no, she's, she's uh, rich, coke. She's addicted to coke. Um, <laughs> listen, sp speaking of coke, um, I feel like we should talk about, right? She's free, right? Yeah, give it up. Free Britney. Britney's finally free. I am clearly a, a Britney fan, right? Um, some of my friends who are here uh, might know this about me. Um, I actually do own uh, eight. Britney Spears shirts, um, 10 if you count sweaters and embroidered denim jackets, um, <laughs> which is a poor substitute for a personality, but it's what I went with, um, and we're in too deep. Uh, but <laughs> the fact that she's finally free from the conservatorship, right? Like, for years, her life and her career has been sh controlled by like her dad and a team of lawyers, and the whole thing was, it was, it was toxic. Some over here, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, but it, like, it wasn't just the conservatorship, right? It was like the, the pop star phenomenon in general, right? Like, you know, she had millions of fans all over the world, like constantly telling her, like, give me more albums. <laughs> and, and especially in this industry, which is so like, work, 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 bitch. <laughs> That pressure gets to you, and, and with a paparazzi too, right? Like she could have a Saturday night that you and I could have, and that happens, she sees the camera flash, and she's like, oops, I did it again. And, and with her history of drug abuse, that happens, and she has the urge to be like, hit me, baby. Yeah, one more time. Womanizer. Is a, another one of her songs. Um, we split the crowd on this one uh, here at the Denver Jewish Community Center. Older crowd, I get it. Um, I, uh, <laughs> listen, I, you, you know, that was less a series of any jokes whatsoever and, and, and more just a litmus test uh, for your collective knowledge of Britney's deep and diverse discography. Um, and, you, and you did all right, you know? The next time you'll be stronger. Um, <laughs> and I, I, I should stop, but, uh, but it is my prerogative. Um, <laughs> And I, and I do feel lucky to be on stage here doing this with you all. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I actually, like, just to get a little sentimental for a second, um, I, I did some shows in Vegas last year for the first time. Um, and it was where Britney famously performed a lot, right? So that, that felt like a big deal for me, um, especially because in third grade, this is completely true, I wrote a play about a dysfunctional royal family, and I wrote a part for myself named Princess Britney Spears. <laughs> and, and all of my lines were Britney lyrics. And so when I was in Vegas last year, like doing a show there in the same city where she so famously had a residency, like I remember thinking like, you know, if, if third grade Sam could see me up on this stage, about to embark on a three-day coke bender. <laughs> He'd be proud, you know. <laughs> I, I'm kidding, I did, I did not do any coke that, uh, that weekend. It, it was just me against the music featuring Madonna. Um, <laughs> all right, that was a deep cut Britney song and I understand that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, listen, I, you know, I've, I've talked about uh, drugs a fair amount up here. Um, I don't want to get the wrong impression, or my dad will get the wrong impression. She is here tonight. Um, I don't do that many drugs, okay? You know, I smoke weed sometimes, right? Um, but I never get, like, too crazy with it. Um, except for one time, um, which was the last time that I was in Colorado. I went to my friend Zach's basement, um, and he gave me a gummy, an edible gummy, um, and I was like, oh, kind of big, um, whatever, like chewed it, swallowed it. After I swallowed it, he was like, oh, Sam, by the way, that was 50 milligrams. Oh. Yeah, all right, stoners, stoners, <laughs> that's where they are, a couple more over here. Yeah, um, for those of you who are unfamiliar and don't regularly eat uh, marijuana edibles, um, that reaction makes a lot of sense, right? Like, in terms of alcohol, let's do that. Um, eating a 50 milligram edible, um, that's like if, instead of at the top of your night, like taking a couple shots, getting things going to pregame, if instead you slammed your head in a minivan door, 
over and over and over again. So I've taken this edible and very quickly, I am the highest I have ever been. And I am freaking out, all right? The walls are doing dubstep. I am 90 feet tall and I can hear time. Not like the ticking of a clock, but like, it's inscrutable passage. And then at that point, my friend Zach, who should be tried for war crimes at The Hague, puts on the zombie movie 28 days later and passes out. <laughs> yeah. So I'm losing my mind at this point. I am shaking remembering this. The uh, zombies are like eating people's necks. People are hacking zombies up with machetes. That one skinny dude is poking people's eyes out. And then at the climax of the movie, there's this guy who's chained to the side of a military base and he's looking at all the carnage around him. He's weeping, he's weeping. And he delivers the iconic line. It's just people killing people. And I look over at my passed out friend, Zach, and I'm like, <sighs> He's a people. <laughs> so I freak out, I run upstairs, and then I finally come to stillness in the kitchen when I come face to face with his girlfriend. And we make eye contact, and she just like slides some water over to me. Um, and we, we touch, we make contact. And I'm like, I feel a soul bond here. And, and we, don't, we don't say a word but we just get closer and closer and we hold each other and I'm like, oh my God, I'm in love <laughs> with my best friend Zach's girlfriend and I don't know how to tell him. <laughs> uh, uh, my friend Zach, um, doesn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> um, he does have a two and a half year old border collie named Daisy. <laughs> um, whom I spooned <laughs> on the kitchen floor until dawn. <laughs> because <laughs> you never think you'd fall in love with your best friend's dog. <laughs> A shit ton of weed will change that. <laughs> all right, my name's Sam Clark. Thank you all so much. Have a dream come true. Have a good night. Ha, ha, ha.